throttle. He loved life and he loved fishing and hunting. I mean, there was always a stringer full of fish. The last time his mom saw him was December 17th, 2020. Ira and his roommate, 49-year-old Lyman Little, vanished without a trace. Police posting the disappearance online. Ira's mother repeatedly taking to social media. And let's just keep this going because this mom's not giving up. Somebody did something to my son. Somebody did something to Lyman Little. Come on, come on. Somebody knows what happened. The family admits over the years, Ira had gotten involved in drugs, possibly seeing the cartels as a lucrative opportunity. Said, you don't have to worry about me no more. Mom, I got it. I'm in with the cartels and he had X's and stuff on his wrist. And I'm like, oh Lord. Along with vigils and releasing balloons in his honor, Marilyn Briscoe says she's gone through dumpsters and climbed into caverns, followed every tip about where her son could be. I'm exhausted. I'm totally exhausted. You know what all this is from? You know what all this is from? It's from me climbing in a cave the other day for three hours, me. Knowing her best hope may be finding his remains. And I was praying, God, please just let me find it and let it be over. Let it be over. But 27 months of searching and no answers. An update from police says they have issued multiple search warrants and several potential burial sites have been excavated, but still no human remains have been found. The sheriff calls it an open investigation. The family frustrated. I am hoping that, that maybe they know things that they just can't share. For Marilyn Briscoe, no matter what her son was involved in, only one thing really matters. All we miss for is someone to please tell us where our son is. That's all. If it's a body or if whatever, we'll take it. Where is Ira Lee Briscoe and even further, Lamont Little, right? We have two cases here that we can investigate. Uh, joining me this morning is Law Olmsted. He's the president of the Missing Persons Center in LA, and he has been following this case. In fact, I came across some of your coverage when we were looking into this case ourselves and noticed that you all were on it and had it up on your website since the very beginning. Uh, before we get into our discussion, I again want to encourage people who are watching online, just joining us, um, if you are just becoming familiar with the case and the disappearance of Ira Briscoe, um, join in the conversation. If you have a question pertinent to the case, uh, please post it online and we can try to get to some of your questions. And if you just have a comment of encouragement or missing people in general in some of these cases that we're covering, uh, I encourage you to partake in the conversation. Uh, law, this case stands out in for a lot of reasons because one, law enforcement says there were suspicious circumstances behind it. Um, can you get into some of the details about what they mean by that? And again, this case two years old now. Well, you know, when, when you just stay, say it, state it like that, there's so suspicious circumstances. I mean, that in itself is suspicious. Usually there's more detail given. And, um, you know, something to go back to is the communication between the family and law enforcement. There seems to be a lot of conflicting reports, what was said to each other on both ends. The police say that they've communicated X, Y, Z to the family. The family says they've commuted X, Y, Z to the police, but nothing kind of matches up. So somewhere in between all of this information is kind of the truth. And it's hard to get to with all of the mystery involved because there has been no solid communication. There's been really no defined search efforts. Um, there's, there's talk of uh, they've excav excavated uh, different locations. Well, usually, you know, police are very excited about those kind of discoveries and, and, and efforts, and they publicize them. They get the community involved. Uh, they put out press releases of what they found, what locations they're going to be at, especially in a small town. You would think this would be covered by the local media, and none of that was. So it's really kind of confusing and, uh, you know, left to speculation on what actually has been done on the case. Right. And the other thing that is confusing, kind of amplifies the concern, is it's not just one missing person. I mean, Ira is 25 years old, but you have 49-year-old Lamone Little as well, who also 
has essentially vanished. These guys were roommates. They just don't disappear. No, it's true. And, you know, when, um, again, we always do research on the cases that we put into our database to see if we can lend a hand in any way. And Lamont Little is, is, is like a mystery in himself. I've only seen one photograph of him online this whole time. I've heard no statements, no, no one in his family, nowhere in the community, no one has said anything about him, his character, you know, what kind of person he was, what he did for a living. Um, even what the relationship is between the two gentlemen, how they met, um, there's really nothing. And it, it, it's, it's very, again, very confusing. Yeah. Well, let's talk about a couple things that we do know. Um, at least at this point, Ira's mom says that he may have been mixed up with a bad crowd, gotten involved with some people who were potentially dangerous. There's been mention of cartel involvement. You see the tattoos on his wrist. What do we know about his past and some of his connections that we've been able um, to conclude about what he may have been going through? We don't know anything about his past. The only thing that can link us to his past is um, there's supposedly a girl that he was dating who was attached somehow to a man who had attacked um, Ira. We don't know anything about the details other than it was supposedly caught on video, um, but nobody's, you know, the, the video has never surfaced. So it, it's, it's kind of hard to tell there again. Um, mm. There's just tons of missing information. I, I wish I had more to share about facts because if we have facts, we can always go back to the root of the facts and kind of, you know, have a, uh, a timeline of what needs to be done, what was done, what the evidence was, what was found, um, compare that to tips or any information. And there's none of this. There's none whatsoever. So the only timeline that we have is December 17th, 2020, the last time that Ira was seen. Do we know anything about that day, who he talked to? Does his mom have any information about that? No, no, there's there's nothing. And and again, you know, something that uh, we had touched on prior is is the the home where he and uh, Little resided was ransacked. Well, part of that statement that the mother made about that in the media was that there were SD cards removed from the location that she knew that, and that there were also cameras, uh, or the SD cards possibly on some cameras that were out in the yard somewhere, you know, some kind of like hunting type cameras uh, that were, were taken. Outside of that, there's really been no solid information, not even to say that's solid, but it, it's something to create more speculation. But, you know, as we know, that's the point we're at in this case right now, where everybody involved in it is speculating because we're not getting any good information from either side, the family side or the law enforcement side. Statements aren't matching up. So it's, it's very, very hard to, to, to know what's going on, what needs to be done, where to look, who's responsible, if the cartel is involved, if people who were involved in a shooting the day before these guys were reported had anything to do with it. There's just no way of knowing. Yeah, and a couple of things that police have said. I mean, one, it is an active investigation, a missing persons case. They've excavated several search warrants. They've excavated potential burial sites. They haven't found anything. And also there have been nine arrests in connection with the case. Um, unrelated charges, though, that led to those arrests. Um, anything more you know about this? No, I'm hearing the same things and reading the same things that you are in that regard. And it'd be kind of interesting to find out, you know, what was said um, between those nine individuals that have been arrested. They, the police report that those interviews have led to moving forward in the investigation, but to what extent? And, you know, it's kind of tiring from everybody to hear from law enforcement. Well, this is an ongoing investigation. We can't comment. They haven't even said that, to be quite honest. But... I'm waiting for that to come out next. Is that it's an ongoing investigation, we can't comment. I would like to know, myself and a lot of other people who have been following the case, would like to know what has transpired. Why were those people arrested on un unrelated charges? What did they say? Did they have anything of, of value that can actually move the case forward? Um, so again, it's just more speculation. We, we don't have any facts to, to go on. And the speculation over the years 
it starts building up and building up and building up. And now this whole cartel angle is the latest thing that I've heard about it. And I don't believe there was any cartel involvement here. I mean, a cartel is not big in Missouri as far as I know. Um, and as far as missing persons cases go and the cartel like this, mm, not very typical. Yeah. So we're looking at tattoos on the left of your screen on Ira's wrist. He's 25 years old. He was a young father. You saw him in that video uh, playing the guitar with his young son. Uh, his family and, and definitely his mom are not giving up the search and trying to put the pressure on investigators to come up with some answers. I'm curious, Law, you're with the Missing Persons Center. You guys cover lots of different cases. How does this one compare and stack up to some of the other cases that you continue to follow? For a lot of these families, um, it's dead end after dead end in trying to get answers in these cases. Is this one any different? Well, this one is really, again, a, a huge mystery. This is a story. You know, a lot of people talk about getting their cases exposed to the media and getting the word out. I've been doing this for over 30 years, and I worked on some really high-profile missing person cases. And I don't know why this hasn't got more attention on a wide scale, because it is such, such a mystery. I do see cases on a daily basis um, that don't really match the same you know, structure as this one, uh, but it's, it's kind of, you know, it's got some typical aspects to it, but then it's got some other things that are just insane that just don't, they just don't fit. They don't fit the whole narrative whatsoever. Yeah, it's perplexing. Uh, we have a comment uh, from one of the viewers watching on YouTube. Layla says, I have known this family since childhood. I hope someone gives them some answers soon. It, it makes me wonder about the social media component of some of these cases, even two years old. The families want to keep them in the headlines, want to keep people talking about it. Um, do you find that if, if they are successful in doing so, that it leads to people coming forward with more information in some of the cases that you've covered? How does that help the social media army? The social media army is is amazing. It's, it's 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 something that we all rely on, especially in missing person cases, because it gets the exposure out there. And uh, you know, we get in a lot of tips uh, from our website uh, daily on all kinds of cases. And a lot of them are are you know they're kind of just speculation. Uh, and some have some you know good leads to them that we we forward on to law enforcement. Um, but social media is a huge thing. We try to uh, use it, you know, our platform. We get a lot of uh, visits daily to the website. So it's, 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 it creates good traffic in itself. But the social media aspect of this is essential. But the thing is, there's a lot of, we'll call them, I don't want to use the term web sleuths because there's actually an organization, web sleuths, who have a lot of people that, that, that volunteer time to cover things. But there's a lot of people out there that the more this goes on, and the more legs it takes through social media, the more specu speculation is kind of resulting from it. And what it does, it leads from the facts. Although the facts are minimal, there are still some basic facts here that aren't being followed up on and they're getting lost in the social media. And that is a concern. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. Well, I think that's part of why I really sure. wanted to talk to you, Law, is one, because it looks like you all do your research, you're very engaged in the cases, and you are focused on the facts. And that is what we have to do, because um, the internet is a very big, bad place sometimes, and it can evolve into rumors and speculation and, and places that you don't want to go in some of these cases. But I think the good thing about talking about them on social media is it keeps these people's faces on the screen. Maybe somebody sees them, recognizes them, it leads to some of the facts and answers that these families so desire. Uh, Ira Lee Briscoe, president of the Missing Person Center. Hey, thanks for this, um, for coming on, talking about this case. I know uh, there's a lot more we want to know, and maybe this discussion will lead to some of the answers that we're seeking. Uh, we'll have you back as we cover some more missing cases. Uh, you guys are doing a great job. We're happy to partner with you on that. So appreciate your time. Thank you very much. And thanks. if you have a missing case that you think that we should be covering, um, many of our cases come from you at home. So if a loved Loved one, a friend, a family member has gone missing or you know of a case that we should pay attention to, you can reach out to us, send us some information and submit a case at newsnationnow.com slash missing. You can also send your tips through our News Nation app. And if you have any information on the disappearance of Ira Lee Briscoe, you are encouraged to contact the Howell County Sheriff's Office. We've got that number um, on our website as we continue to cover his case. Uh, it just breaks my heart to hear from his mom, uh, so desperate for some answers and holding out hope. 
he comes home alive. Thank you for being part of our discussion as always. I'll see you back here next Thursday for the latest case.